So let's take care of these three things first. Um, right now we don't have any uh, variables or values. However, we do want to make the start marker uh, invisible when we begin. Okay, set focus for keyboard input, just one liner, stage dot focus equals stage. And um, if the focus isn't on the stage and you attach a keyboard listener to the stage, then it's not going to register, it's not going to pick up on the keyboard inputs. And we want to add three listeners. First, let's add the enter frame listener. And it's just going to call this enter frame handler every time we enter a frame. And we want to add to the stage or attach to the stage a, a keyboard event named key down and we'll name that key down handler and and here is our key up handler or listener okay so this is our constructor our main function and we're done with that for now but now we have three more functions to implement here, so let's begin with those. Now what, what we want to do in these three functions, uh, we'll comment those first as well. Every time we enter a frame, we're going to want to gravitate the player, and then move the player. Uh, we also want to process collisions. And finally, we want to scroll the stage. Let's create um, a variable, vy, to represent our downward, downward velocity. And also, um, if you have Publish settings, Control Shift F12. Under Flash, I like to um, script Action Script 3 settings. I like to uncheck the automatically declare stage instances because that way you have to declare them yourself. And when you declare them yourself, it's easier to keep track of uh, just what variables are uh, declared in this class. So for example, we have our start marker, player, and boundaries. So we have to declare those manually here as public variables. And the player is of type player and our boundaries is of type boundaries. Okay, so we have our three stage instances as public variables. We have our velocity. We're eventually going to need um, velocity in the x coordinate direction as well, so we might as well make that now. And we're going to add that to the default value assignments. They start off as zero. Okay, going back to gravitating the player, all you have to do is add a gravity value to velocity, downward velocity. And to move the player, we want a player x coordinate to uh, be adjusted by vx, player y to be adjusted by vy. And processing collisions is going to take several lines, so we'll create a function for that. And scrolling the stage also takes, well, just a couple lines, but we'll create a function for that anyway. And we'll create those here. 
All right, we'll save our script, our action script file, in the same folder, basic side scroller. And we have to name it document main because that is what we specified to be the class definition file. And let's test it, make sure everything's working. It is not. Uh, we, okay, I forgot to include um, or import these classes. So we need to import flash dot events dot event as well as keyboard event. So see if it's working now. Okay, so we have our player, we have our boundary, and it's obviously being gravitated. Now let's process collisions so it doesn't fall through the boundary. To process collisions, we will first need to, um, first of all, we don't want to process any collision really unless uh, it's to stop our player from falling. So let's first detect that. When the player is falling, uh, we're going to have First, let's check for whether it's fallen off the stage or not. And if otherwise, if it hasn't fallen off the stage, process collisions with boundaries. OK, let's code that. So to detect when the player is falling, all you have to do is see if vy is greater than 0. And to see if uh, the player fell off the stage, we need to test player y coordinate stage stage height. And otherwise, we'll do everything else. OK, if the player has fallen off the stage, we want to reset everything so that the player is back in its original start marker location. So player.x equals start marker.x. OK, and boundaries. We want to set it back to zero. And also, uh, we want to reset the or, or vertic vertical velocity. Okay, and also, we need to make sure our boundary's origin is at zero, zero to begin with. So let's set that to zero, zero and move our box back down. OK, so our boundary is over here, but the origin is defined by this point up here. And let's test that. OK, so now we have our infinitely falling player, but now when it falls off the stage, it resets back to where the, the start marker is uh, positioned. We'll move the start marker down a bit. Also, let's have the start marker be defined by the center point 